You ever think to yourself, dag, yo, I just need a bigger phone? No, not like iPhone or Pixel big. Nope, V20 or Mate 9 big just isn't big enough. I need something proper large. Well, Lenovo might just have the right device for you. Okay, we're messing around a little. We all know the Fab 2 Pro is being released as a first generation platform to show off Google's Tango augmented reality. But this phone exists, and if you were to spend $500 to pick one up, what kind of experience would you be in store for? First up for you specs junkies, pause the video now to see what this beast is packing. And with that out of the way, this is the biggest phone I've ever been tasked with reviewing. There's a hypothesis that mini tablet sales have been negatively affected by the rise of larger screened phones. The Fab 2 would support that idea as I'd never want to haul around this phone and a tablet. This is a substantial gadget. No pretense here. No pretending that thinness matters. It's big and it embraces that size and thickness. Having played with numerous yoga tablets and convertibles, the Fab definitely has that Lenovo vibe. It's a straightforward look, clean professional lines. Chamfered edges make an attempt at delivering some style, but largely the form of this phone closely follows the function. The 6.4 inch display is crisp and detailed thanks to that Quad HD resolution, though we do wish it were brighter. Our battery test is run at 190 lux and this phone seems to top out somewhere around 350. Now, some of these AR apps could definitely benefit from an easier to read screen while outside. The fingerprint sensor is quick and accurate enough, but even in our weeks of using it, the placement on this phone still feels low, that you really need to bend that finger to unlock the phone, and where your digit would normally land is exactly where a camera sensor lives. We'd also be remiss if we didn't mention the lack of NFC. No tap and pair, no tap and pay. Certainly a frustrating omission for any phone, especially at this price point. Moving over to software, we're happy Lenovo has recently found something of a balance between customizing the UI for China and appealing to a more Western audience. This phone now much more closely resembles stock Android, and organizational elements like the App Store have returned. There's almost no bloat here, with only a few Lenovo services pre-installed. The Fab comes with a mid-range processor, specifically the Qualcomm 652. We wouldn't be too concerned about this chipset. It still runs a touch on the warm side, but manages to deliver better performance benchmarking than last year's flagship processors. And Lenovo seems to have optimized this hardware well. It posts numbers just nipping at the heels of some phones using more powerful hardware. We have been a little concerned with a handful of software gremlins, though. Some apps force closing and the odd Android service borking but they've thankfully been minor inconveniences and hopefully Lenovo can patch them in a future update. This company doesn't have much of a relationship with phone consumers in North America, so it's an opportunity to show us what they can do with updates and support. Wi-Fi reception is adequate, but the Fab falls behind many other metal-backed phones like the Mate 9 and the V20. Likewise, cellular reception often landed a couple decibels behind, though speed tests in my neighborhood on AT&T were about average for downloading. Surprisingly, the Fab was a bit faster at uploading over LTE than many of our recently reviewed devices. Listening to speaker and headphone output for all this space, speaker performance is about average for a bottom firing mono speaker. It's not bad, it's not great, it'll get the job done for most folks. Likewise, the headphone situation is mostly functional. Lenovo has partnered with Dolby to provide processing tweaks. We can't find a way to properly disable that, so all audio has at least a little EQ adjusting going on. Quality numbers land this phone near the bottom of our review pack, right alongside the LG G5 and the Huawei Mate 9. But thankfully, Lenovo included a slightly beefier amp, just barely edging out the Galaxy S7 for volume. Now moving to the camera, this shooter is also no frills. You get respectable 16 megapixel images with the requisite HDR mode and a handful of scene modes. Though HDR shots take a while to capture, and even in reasonably lit indoor situations, it can be a challenge to pull off a crisp shot free of motion blur. Video is capped at 1080p, and frustratingly, there doesn't seem to be any way to control focus. The Fab shoots truly full auto. It's pretty clear this phone wasn't built around the notion of multimedia creation, and this is the main feature we'd be worried might be a deal breaker for folks in our audience. Now, a 4,050 milliamp hour battery sounded impressive until we played with another phone that also packed a 4,000 milliamp hour capacity in a smaller overall footprint. 
The extra battery here largely compensates for the additional screen size. Running our media tests, streaming 30 minutes of HD video over Wi-Fi at 190 lux, the fab drained 5%, which is upper mid-pack runtime for a modern Android handset. When used primarily as a phone, we get great daily use, easily lasting past dinner time. But that actually wasn't very common. A Tango hardware and apps will drain that battery a lot quicker. Recharge rates are very good considering the battery size. 30 minutes on the included charger resulted in a 44% recharge. You'll get plenty of runtime after a quick top-off. And lastly, we should probably talk about Tango. Augmented reality has the potential to affect nearly every service we might run from our phones. The initial batch of apps we've played with are all very promising, but we're still in early days yet. What's nice about AR over virtual reality, it's a lot easier to share the experience with other people. Where Daydream needs to be experienced one person at a time wearing something on your face that blocks out the rest of the world, Tango can be viewed side by side. Showing someone this Domino app, letting them play only requires me to pass the phone over, and I can still guide or share in that experience as they play. It's still incredibly raw, think the early days of cardboard, but the fact that we're already seeing productivity solutions and not just games is encouraging. We were asked by numerous folks in our hands-on video how accurate this hardware was at measuring distance, and we're happy to report it's pretty close, usually within a half inch of a proper tape measure. We wouldn't rely on it just yet to do precision work, but it's significantly faster at getting the general proportions of a room right to drop in furniture. On a personal note, it was a funny realization though that I didn't have to hold still while scanning. We're just so used to that sensitivity or shooting panorama photos. You can walk around, drop markers, get up close. Tango does the gig well and in a much more casual way than previous solutions. So let's wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the Lenovo Fab2 Pro? When judged on the merits of being a mini tablet phone, Lenovo's offering delivers a reasonable bang for buck. In the United States, what would we compare it against? We can't imagine the market is huge, but if you want a six inch plus screen in a device which feels like a premium handset, you're not gonna be satisfied by pixels and iPhone pluses. $500 is an impulse buy territory, but the screen size alone somewhat warrants the higher cost over the various terrific $400 phones we've reviewed this year. Though, it's a shame that it's lacking NFC and that the camera game is so weak. It's not an exciting phone at $500, but there's enough here to justify the cost. As it stands, most people would be safer considering this a companion device like a mini tablet to another phone. Then you add Tango to the mix and the story shifts a little bit. Now at $500, you're buying something unique. Literally no other phone has this. It's rare that we find something truly new in the mobile market. Augmented reality is rad, but to be fair, it always makes us a bit nervous recommending a phone built around one specific feature. You are also buying into the promise of future services to come. And that's the cost of doing business on the bleeding edge. Google might walk away from this tomorrow, but we don't think they will. At least, we hope they don't. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more reviews like these and help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next review. Dad, yo!